Welcome to this episode of the Structural Engineering Channel, a podcast focused on helping structural engineering professionals stay up to date on technical trends in the field and to help them to succeed in their careers and lives. In this episode, I'll be talking to Alicia Trout, an engineering teacher at High Tech High, about how she sparks a passion for engineering among young students and the role of diversity in engineering. I'm your host, Rachel Holland. Now let's jump into our conversation of the week. This episode of the Structural Engineering Channel is brought to you by PPI, a leader in engineering exam prep for the PE Structural Exam. PPI provides expert prep courses and study resources designed to help you pass the PE Structural Exam the first time. PPI's PE Structural course is fully updated and taught with October 2021 code references and includes new editions of their PE Structural books. PPI's live online courses include hours of lectures, problem solving demonstrations, exam strategy sessions, office hours, and a passing guarantee. When you take a live online course, PPI guarantees you will pass or you can take the on-demand course for free. PPI has helped engineers achieve their licensing goals since 1975. Check out PPI today at PPI, the number two, pass.com to see all of the resources available for PE structural exam prep. Again, that's PPI, the number two, P-A-S-S.com. Hey, Alicia, thank you for joining us today. I'm super excited to talk to you about your career. Um, Can you tell us a little little bit about your career journey and what led you to the teaching world and teaching engineering and um, working with middle school students? Yeah, so I went to school at UC Irvine and studied civil engineering and specialized in structures and then worked in the residential field um, when the housing market was booming. And so kind of bounced around residential, um, structural engineering, project management, um, plan checking for the city of Laguna Beach. And I worked for a developer for a little bit. And um, I was working for the city of Laguna Beach when I got pregnant with my first kiddo and he came early. Uh, He was a preemie. And so we kind of just wanted to, I was um, in Orange County, which is a little bit away from home, San Diego. And so I wanted to get back home. And when I came back home, I was looking for work. And in the engineering section um, on Craigslist was a job for an engineering teacher. And I just always thought about it. My stepmom is in education. Um, as you know, Rachel, the, how we met is we uh, were working at a structural engineering company doing residential design. And um, I kind of was put to the task of training some of the new engineers coming in on our software and just kind of the system. So that's how we met. And I got to train you and um, some other new engineers. And I just always loved that part. Um, I also think the parts that I loved about engineering was working with people, um, you know, going on site and talking to people, um, uh, getting, you know, having those more personal interactions um, instead of just on the computer doing calculations. Uh, And so I, this job was for a company called High Tech High, which is a charter school. And uh, I applied and got the job. And um, I mean, kind of never looked back. It was just a really cool fit of all the things that I I love about engineering um, and just kind of this new passion. Um, So a weird roundabout journey, um, but I've been with them for a long time now. And it was kind of an interesting, I mean, I love that you found the job on Craigslist for starters, because I don't know if people still use that for jobs, but um, I know, right. uh, Dating myself. (laughs) (laughs) But um, the other cool thing about that was that like, you know, a lot of like, if you're going to be a teacher, you usually have to go to school for a teaching credential, right? But you Mm -hmm. were in a unique position because they didn't require that. So they have their own uh, intern program. They call them district interns. So you can actually teach while you're getting your credential. They have a accredited, accredited credentialing program within the charter. Um, they now have grown um, and it's they call it the, the Graduate School of Education through High Tech High. So they also have a master's program as well and a residency program where if you want to look into being a school leader or starting your own school, um, that's uh, the, the students can actually, you can get your credential at the same time as also getting your master's. So they have a couple of different programs, but I actually got my credential at the same time I was started teaching my first class. So I was, you know, taking classes 
in the afternoon. And then what I would learn, I would apply basically the next day. Um, so I, I took all my C sets, my tests, uh, but basically step foot in the class just with, they give you, they help you get your emergency credential. It's like a, um, you know, what you would have, it's, I think it's like a year long, um, credential. And then while you're doing that, you're, you're getting your full clear credential. That's awesome. Okay. So you had like, um, obviously engineering education, practical, like work in the field of engineering, and then you make the jump. So, I mean, obviously you trained me, we, we discussed this, um, on, on our program when we were working together and, you know, you have to make it easy for people that are learning, like to kind of figure out that concept or learn that skill. So how do you, how do you do that with middle schoolers? Like, and, and still keep it engaging and help them to understand that concept. I think I would say my biggest strength, because obviously, like as a teacher, I feel like I'm always reflecting and realizing there's more I could do. But one thing I really try and do is find the fun in what we're doing. And so but also see the connection to world, the world outside. So, for example, the I think it all revolves around the projects that we do. So, you know, the design challenge, we start with design challenges Um, which I hook them early on in the year. So, you know, they're building paper towers, stuff like that. But the biggest one that they will remember, I probably the rest of their lives, I sent in a picture of this is they, they need to make a pair of wearable two inch high cardboard shoes. They have a model, they're in groups of three. Um, I switch between cardboard or foam board, but they only have that hot glue and ribbon. And they have to create a pair of shoes that are at least two inches off the ground that can't have to be walked in a, in a fashion show. And so those kinds of things where they are given a design challenge, they're given constraints and then paired with that project and paired with like, I think it's an important part of my job is just opening up them up to how many different fields there are of engineering. Because I think how do they know what they want to do if they don't even know it exists? Um, and then I also tell them there's going to be engineering jobs that don't exist now that well when they enter the worst workforce. So yeah. that project alone is just a good example where they're using engineering skills, but the product is something fun and that they it's challenging, but also they don't want to stop. So it's like that balance of really pushing them <laughs> where they feel like they want to give up, but yet the payoff of like seeing and wearing the shoe is so fun and big that they, they keep going. And then um, I think also the the things that I do in my class are so different than what they might get in the other class. So I, you know, um, building things, but also doing some like computer programming, working with circuits, like microcontrollers, physical computing, 3D modeling and printing. Like those are the things that kids kind of get excited about. And they're like, oh, that's cool. And the parents come in like, you're doing that in middle school. And so I think it's just like, I have the automatic buy-in when the stuff that they're doing is, is cool. So I don't know if that answers the question. I, I just think when I think of my job as an engineering teacher, I'm not teaching them how to calculate, you know, things like we're not looking at, you know, we're not calculating moments or like, um, you know, like figuring out the reaction and, you know, we're not doing all of that. We're just, I'm getting them in the mindset of solving problems, but using tools that engineers might use. Um, yeah. For like design thinking. Like almost just like how to be more solution oriented and like, what would you do to like adjust it so that it would work better or could solve the problem? Oh, I was going to say at the same time using like tools that, like, you know, it, computer programming or 3D modeling are things that, you know, are a little bit more like cutting edge or will be something that'll be so like prevalent in their future, probably even, you know, bigger and better. But for them to have yeah. some exposure to it, to know what they, the challenge behind using those things, but also ha- kind of have like that step up of like, they've had experience before other people have. Totally. Yeah. I remember a long time ago, I was going to tell you, you texted me. I, I think I was like checking in like, Hey, how's, how's the job? And you sent me a message saying that you had a lesson plan called rulers rule. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you remember that. I just, I thought it was so funny. And yeah. um, just like, again, like, like that's a skill, right? Learn, learning how to yeah. use a scale or like whatever. It's like, and to being able to teach that, make it fun. I'm sure just knowing you, I'm sure you make it fun. Um, wh- what about, um, I was going to say like how you're talking about doing all those other things with like the circuits and like other types of engineering that were not part of your background. How is that like teaching 
teaching something that wasn't like a hundred percent in your wheelhouse? It's a really good question. I, I think um, the culture at our school, we have project-based learning um, is that we don't, we try not to shy away from teachers learning alongside students. <laughs> um, so there's a lot of that happening. There's a lot of behind the scenes of me figuring things out. They always say, do the project first. So you can kind of work out some of the things the students were in, will encounter. But I think, I mean, you probably, I know we went to different schools. You were at Cal Poly and I was at UC Irvine, but um, I did take, you know, some coding classes and we did have to take AutoCAD. Um, when they made us do everything on paper first. I don't know if you had to do that, like <laughs> isometric with like actual isometric paper. Yeah. Um, so some of the things we do, we also, I did an electrical engineering. Like there were some classes my first two years that expose you to other fields yeah. before uh, focusing on structures. So I do use that, you know, um, like, I feel like that helped me with what I do now, but it is just a lot of figuring things out as I go and letting the students know that, you know, I might not know all the answers, but we can figure it out. And I think that's also part mm -hmm. of it too, is trying to model that, like, we don't know everything, but we can use our resources to, to figure it out. Um, and there are definitely kids who have surpassed my knowledge. You know, there's just <laughs> definitely, there are kids that I'm like, okay, you're going to do something amazing. And I let them know that like you are, you know, remember me when you go on and do amazing things. So, <laughs> and I know that, you know, you have to be okay with that. So I think just, I know enough to expose them and then maybe give them like a little fire to pursue it more. Like I have kids... Last year, there was a kid I had that we did basic circuit stuff. And next thing, his mom's telling me, and he's coming in with these different parts that he bought on Amazon. And I guess he even sparked a little fire in the garage at home. <laughs> but he was just, you know, starting to tinker at home. And so I guess in a safe way, uh, exposing them to something that they want to take even further than I did in class. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. What about um, what sort of like you just speaking of the fire, what sort of um, ways or strategies do you use to spark like the interest? Like what, what are the, I know you've talked a lot about like the projects, but what are other ways that you're just like sort of sparking interest? Cause not all of the students have to take your class, right? It's an elective or do they all have to take that? So I've done a few different things, but all of my classes they have to take. So I do okay. have, I've been, we call them exploratory <laughs> teachers where it's basically, we have core classes, which are math, science, and humanities. Humanities is reading, writing, and um, like social studies. Um, and so I was the extra class that was a semester long, and they would rotate between like an art and theater and then, and then my class. Um, but now I actually... And I don't know if, if it's kind of switched from year to year, but now I am teaching math again. So I teach math, science and engineering. Um, so I have a group of about 60 kids that I see twice a day. But the other math science teacher in sixth grade, she doesn't really do much engineering. Um, she focuses on more uh, social justice pieces. So it, it, we can the thing about my school that's cool is you can teach to your passions. Um, but to answer your question, this I do well. I also do run electives, and I usually do three D modeling, and I also do Lego robotics. So that one is student choice. Um, so we do use some um, engineering skills for that as well. Um, but to make it engaging for the kids, I mean, I I'll be honest. There's a lot of students that say to me, "I don't ever want to be an engineer. It's too hard." You know, like. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, it's like, okay. And what that means is when they're doing programming or they're doing 3D modeling or they're figuring out circuits or, you know, they don't like the challenge of it, you know, and they, they just know right away they don't want to do it. But I think there's a couple things, you know, one, you can't be what you can't see, right? So I think like being a female engineer is one thing where I, I think just being there and representing that, I'm hoping get like get some of the girls and I have had some, some girls in my, I think I'm on my 14th year teaching, uh, pursue engineering and, and tell me that like, you know, that like my class helped like spark that. I think I could, 
I wish I saw it more, you know, more often it's a lot of boys in my Lego robotics. I have a couple of girls sprinkled in, um, and a lot of boys who like end up going that, that route. So it's something I'm working on. Um, so it might not be that I'm sparking an interest for them to become engineers, but I really feel like I do help at least create a respect for engineers and how important their role is in our society. And I, that's a big thing for me that it's important to me because obviously we all know that like these generations are inheriting a bunch of issues that they didn't create, you know, whether it be climate change and technology, people, cities are going to be built up instead of out because of populations, you know, um, increasing, there's so many things, you know, water being available, um, electricity being more sustainable and in, in green. So there's so many things that these students, you know, we try and temper it with not scaring them, but also knowing that they're part of the solution and that yeah. how important it is to not, and I hope this doesn't offend anyone, but you probably agree with me and have stories where, there were a lot of times I was the only woman in the room or on the job site. Um, there were a lot of times that a lot of the men I were working with were older and white. And so I think that having multiple perspectives as a part of the solution, people coming from different cultures, different areas, and knowing what's important to their culture, and then bringing that to the solution table is is just so incredibly important. And so even if they don't become engineers themselves, I hope that they walk away understanding the importance of it and how it really is people who are going to be solving those issues. You need to have a diverse perspective and lens, but you also want to just appreciate the people that are out there doing that work because it, it does directly affect their lives. And I tell them a story. One of the one of my lead engineers at one of the jobs I had, he had a sign above his office that said, I save lives. And it was kind of like funny. We joked about it, but he, that was a structural engineering company. And, and it, and it is true. And when you see all these natural disasters occurring, especially as like climate change, as we're dealing with like the effects of that, I think it's just going to become more and more apparent. And so anyway, um, I hope that the students in the fun things that we're doing also recognize like the bigger picture. Um, they I might love be, that you're doing that because yeah. we talk, I feel like we talk about that a lot. Um, I know you're not as like heavily involved in Seahawk or anything like that anymore, but um, that's something that we talk about. It's like a, it's a continuing conversation that's happening at the professional level, like twofold, right? Um, diversity, equity, and inclusion, big topic, obviously. And same, same, like, sort of what you're talking about is like we are involved in the built environment and the built environment needs to um cater to all people right so like if you only have a room full of the same people doing a design like they're not going to think about um different perspectives we had a guest on the podcast that um was uh in a wheelchair and she talked mm -hmm. a lot about the different things and how she's changing like building codes. And she lives in another country. Um, she's kind of like helping to change building codes because her life was limited based on that because nobody in a wheelchair had ever been part of that conversation. Right. So it's just like it's interesting how it affects it affects everyone. Um, mm -hmm. And also, though, like on that same topic is how we as engineers or professional engineers, we don't do a good job of promoting how important we are to mm -hmm. like society, right? Like, cause we mm -hmm. help everyone. Like uh, there was a, there was a speaker at the Seahawk convention a year ago um, that talked about how doctors save lives one at a time and engineers like save, you know, hundreds or thousands or whatever, however big the building is, you know? Um, and really like, we're not necessarily viewed like that in like a general sense. So just like promoting the fact that like our profession is worthwhile and stuff like that. So it's really cool that I, I hear mm -hmm. you're like already doing that for kids at like a younger <laughs> age, you know, cause I feel like we're trying to hit it hard at like the kind of college level and incoming, incoming professionals. So it's cool yeah. like that your students are getting exposed to those concepts like early on. 
I love yeah, that. Yeah, and then they're seeing things in the news, you know. I mean, there's been some pretty devastating earthquakes, you know, recently that the kids re- hear. And a, a lot of our students are from the Latinx community, too. So, like, one's down, like, in Latin America, you know, and, and like, the infrastructure, there's so much more damage that may have, have happened here, right, On with, like, a same-scale earthquake. Um, so, you know, just exactly what you're saying, pointing that out and... You know, the things that we're doing in my class are more fun. You know, they're making like interactive Halloween decorations. But like the bigger (laughs) conversation (laughs) is like all the ways, all the avenues of engineering and how it does affect their lives. And, you know, just and we definitely we are more behind the scenes, right, engineers. And I don't think any of us are in it for like the acclaim, (laughs) but it's, you know, it is (laughs) But just to 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 know like how important it is as, as a part of our society. Yeah, for sure, I, I agree with you. What about like um, I know obviously like like recent earthquakes and like world events that are happening. But how do you incorporate um, like real world engineering challenges into the lessons um, that you have for your kids? I mean, so I have sixth grade, and I I try and keep it fairly light a lot, just because I try to preserve their childlike innocence. But um, there are a few things. Um, For example, uh, I I use SimCity. Uh, That one, a a lot of people probably have played that before, but it's so... It's a video game, right? It's a video game. Um, It is really involved. Um, What they learn from that is so... I mean, you don't even have to teach it. They're sitting there thinking, ah, they're mad that I'm raising their taxes, but they want to have schools. <laughs> so what do they expect? And they, like, I don't have to teach them anything. Like, why are they so upset? They're getting sick. Why are they resorting to crime? It's because you need to put education. You know, <laughs> like, so it's all those type of things where my job is not so hard. It's just so obvious to them, like how much there is to manage and you know, be able to plan a city. Um, also, we do a really cool thing. Um, UCSD uh, obviously is down here and they have a structural engineering department and they have what's called a seismic, the seismic outreach program. And so that is another cool one where students in the structural engineering uh, department come to our school and teach them all about earthquakes. And then they do um connects structures out of connects and then we go on campus and they have a little shake table they apply weight to it and they see how different it moves once weight is applied um and then being there unfortunately there they have a large shake table as you know i've seen simpson products uh it's on the side of the freeway and you can see simpson yeah. up there on a, a sign <laughs> which is pretty cool i'm like i know them no but they um <laughs> they uh they like they don't have the, sh- the shake table on campus but being there talking with engineering students is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Um, And then I show them videos of, you know, life size, the the shake shake table test. Um, You know, those are the things that kind of come to mind where it's right away, they can apply it to real life. um, And like kind of the the challenges that are faced, especially when they're working with, um, you know, young adults or adults with it, where they really see the connection. Yeah. What about, um, that's really cool. I do. I like, even with my own kids, like if I have like a teenager or somebody that's like, obviously much younger than me, um, doing something, they think it's like very cool and they, it (laughs) it interests them a lot. But, um, what about like, that would be like for the structural aspect of, of engineering, right? When you're teaching your kids about the structural aspect and working with, um, UC San Diego students, is there, do you have like a lot of other sort of like outreach, things in like local to your school that are like touching on other uh, engineering fields with your students? I, I don't right now. I mean, it's always something that's a okay. goal of mine to connect more. It's just like one of those things that's on my list that I don't always get to, you know, we, we did high tech high originally started with, with Qualcomm like money. Like that was part of oh. um, like the Jacobs family is a part of um Gary Jacobs is on our board. And so we, we had like that connection to Qualcomm. Um, 
And so I don't know if there was originally more of a connection like with projects, but, um, you know, it's, it's definitely something I want to look into right now. All I have is UCSD that I work with regularly. And then your company, Simpson, that we go on the field trip that the students love. We've done that the past two years. Um, and then, uh, we did work with, I mean, we try and have, our projects be um, collaborative between humanities and um, and my class. And so we have worked with people in the community, but not necessarily related to engineering. So um, for example, um, like last year, we worked with people who live in memory care facilities and, mm. uh, and we, on my side, we were looking at the brain and, and memory, but to tie in the engineering piece of it, we were looking at how people use technology to help with, um, brain health and, um, cognitive function. So we were looking at some of the apps that are available. Um, and then we're, we were doing some, uh, JavaScript programming to create some games on our own. So it's more like that, but not necessarily mm. a connection with a company who's showing us what they're doing, you know, making products in the real world. But I, I would yeah. always love to have more connections. I mean, even like, it's just making me think like, even like um, the medical device industry, I mean, that's full of like, I don't even know what engineering that's called, <laughs> but mm -hmm. they're engineers. Um, it would be, I think that would be really cool if you had um, other, um, people like in the, in the field or in school and college, like being able to like see your students and have them get a little feel for like the real life. I don't know. Absolutely. Obviously like yeah. I'm connected in the structural world, so I don't know anybody, but, um, yeah, mm -hmm. that's, that's awesome that you guys do that with UC San Diego. So, yeah. And there is a um, lot in San Diego. You're right. I mean, a lot of biotech, a lot of like, um, <laughs> great, like medical companies down here too. So definitely probably, well, fill you in on that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, what about, uh, like, so typical day in school for your sixth graders, what would like, a? I know you talked, you talked a lot about like the projects and stuff like that, but what would be like a typical engineering lesson or is it like, is rulers rule like a typical lesson? Like what would, <laughs> what would it be? Yeah. I mean, we kind of, um, we built, you know, it, it would, it would definitely be like a, several like a week several weeks of like building on lessons um and a lot of it i try to do self-directed if i can uh so yeah the thing with rulers is you know i teach that there are for drawing straight lines and measuring and because six getters use them for other things as well like <laughs> hitting or <laughs> I was just gonna say uh, hitting making neighbor, grooves right? in the tail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, we talk about that, but like the importance of being able to use them as, you know, for tools and measuring, understanding like the metric and are, you know, pointing out how we're the weirdos who don't use the metric system and how much harder it is for us. But, um, you know, th those type of things too, where we're, we're looking at scale, I have them do, um, the orthographic views. Do you remember those from a long time? Anyway, from AutoCAD, from like yeah. hand drafting. So I'll, I'll make like a, a Lego structure and then they have to draw the, the six views before we start doing 3d modeling online. Um, so, oh, cool. you know, when their brains are hurting, I'm like, I did this in college and, but they could totally do it. I mean, it's just <laughs> visualizing. Um, so drawing the views, making sure everything's straight, making sure like they, they start doing it to scale. But then when it comes to the 3D modeling, for example, we use a, a website called Tinkercad that is through Autodesk, the same people who put out AutoCAD. Um, and so I just have a bunch of tutorials, some that I've made myself. So I'll just make video tutorials. Um, and then they basically have to progress through and show me when they're done. And I check that everything's the right proportion and things are touching how they should and aligned how they should before. And then I'll give them um, some kind of product to make with constraints. Last year they made uh, main night lights that housed um, a little led light bulb. It was paired with that same project where we had, um, we were talking about memory and how sleep is, is connected to um, a lot of mm. brain health. And so the importance of getting eight hours of sleep. So the lights that we had were on it, they would turn on for eight hours 
and then at the same time every day. And so it was their little nightlight to remind them if their light's still on, they need to go back to sleep because they didn't get their eight hours yet. <laughs> and then they created a, uh, their own design, but it had to fit. So I gave them like the dimensions. It had to fit the, oh. the LED. So a lot of like a lot of video tutorials and um, and you know kind of like things that they progress through at their own pace because I will have students that will take a lot longer or need more support and then the kids that are just ready to hit the ground running. Um, that's it, that is a challenge just with teaching, especially at our school. We are. I was actually school. just going to ask yeah. you when you mentioned that, like what, that yeah. that seems like that would be challenging with such a um, kind of a technical topic, like keeping everybody yeah. moving along. So yeah, is is that your biggest challenge or what other challenges do you have? Definitely one of the biggest challenges okay. where we, um, part of our model at High Tech High being project-based learning, we're also full inclusion, which means that um, all students are in the same general setting, general ed setting as everybody else. So um, there could be students like full spectrum, students who need accommodations, who have like IEPs or like processing difficulties or, you know, there, there's like a full range. And then I have students on the other end who, when we do math, they're, they're in like eighth grade, ninth grade math level. So it is a big challenge, especially teaching math, being able to support that full spectrum of students. Um, to be honest, I have students who still, you know, use fingers to subtract or, or add numbers. And then, like I said, students on the, on the opposite side. So being able to, we, we call it dif differentiation when we're planning, making sure that we have um, a, a wide variety of ways we communicate to the students. So having like the video where they can stop it, go back, um, having things printed on a paper with instructions, giving verbal. So we try and give <laughs> directions in all modalities. And um, yeah, so it's definitely a huge challenge. I would say, though, it's pretty cool that a lot of, it happens every year. A lot of my students who really have a hard time with reading, writing, and math, there's always one every year who is amazing, does amazing on the engineering stuff where they they start 3D modeling. I'm like, whoa, where did this come from? Or they do the programming or they're wiring their circuits. And so that is a really cool thing about what we do is you do see these things where the kids might have not been able to really ever show or even known the things that they're like stand really out. good at. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yep. that's so cool. That's awesome. What about um, like, where do you see this like like middle school en engineering education evolving to? Like, I mean, you've been, you said you've been in it 14 years now. I'm sure you've seen quite a bit yeah. of change already. Um, yeah. Where do, you, where do you see it going? I mean, it's interesting because I will admit, like, I am in a bit of a bubble being at a charter school um, and being able to teach where we're really given, like, we can we can do whatever we want. <laughs> Basically, our, our, my director's like, you stick to your passion and the kids are going to be excited, you know, so we're able to yeah. uh, have autonomy that way. But we know that you hear that word STEM, and then a lot of times we hear STEAM now, integrating the arts too. Yeah. We, we hear that word a lot. And, you know, being able to integrate everything and have the students understand how things don't just happen in a silo, you know, you're not going to just be doing a random math problem, you know, it's going to be, you're going to be in the world and you're going to be presented with something you have to figure out what math operation you need to do to solve it, you know. And so having engineering, I think, is a good way for them to apply the things they know. And, you know, instead of just losing it and or, or learning it until they have a test. I do think that it is going to be, you know, if if students graduate and have never had like a, com, you know, com computer science class or um, maybe don't understand how some of the things use ev every day even work. You know, I think that the, like it will be a disadvantage because I, I would I would just believe that like so many so many jobs moving forward are going to involve a degree of technology, or at least it's going to be really helpful to know how to use it. And I mean, we see it, you know, my kids, I, I you know, I'm an engineering teacher and, and my kids help me when I like can't figure something out, like on my phone, you know, like, cause they just, they know they grew up with it. And so um, I think that we're going to see it more and more just because of like 
the way you can incorporate all subjects into it, you know, Mm -hmm. like understanding the social, like social justice part of it, you know, making sure like what we were talking about that all societies are like benefiting, benefiting from the technology or like the safeties in place that engineering provides. And I think that the, the students who already know that before they even go into college, like it's just going to set them up. Like we, we know that we, we can't really have, it would be really sad if we had a shortage of people that want to do this as a profession. And so right. I think like we want to be anticipating that and be, be prepared for that. Like start like fostering the, <laughs> those passions now. And because yeah. it is so important that, um, you know, we can't rely on like AI, like to do everything. Like we need the humans behind, like making those connections and um, and solving these issues for everyone. Yeah, I think it just um, I think just the exposure, the exposure at an early age, it just like mm-hmm. you know, it just sets something in their brain that just says like maybe like, and then when it comes up yeah. later, it doesn't seem so far away or like you know, like it seems like something. Oh yeah, like I could do that. You know, like they feel capable or you know whatever, confident in like that sort of little area. Um, yeah, so, yeah, I mean, like they don't. I think that's awesome. They don't just take it for granted, you know, like they might flip on a light switch and be like, oh, I know what's happening. You know, this is so (laughs) like little things. One of the things that I tell them when I'm teaching them about like the fields, I Mm -hmm. I always put it into like three categories, like engineers make your lives safer. I always say that one first, Uh, more efficient or just more fun. Because like there's a whole field (laughs) just of people who design roller coasters, right? Or might be things for entertainment value. Um, and you know, we all have computers. I I saw a meme recently where it was like, our teachers said like, no, you can't use a calculator. What you're going to grow up and have a calculator in your pocket. And like, we, we fooled, we fooled them. We're like, we got them because like, (laughs) yeah, we do all have a calculator in our pocket, but you know, just as long as they understand like every single thing that is not just in nature, you know, was touched by an engineer that just like the Right. Yeah. Yeah. Big scale. Awesome. So, so, okay. So we always ask our guests this last question um, as like parting advice um, before we totally wrap up. If you had um, any sort of piece of advice for, for listeners um, that are interested potentially in like uh, an engineering education career, like what, what would be your, what would be your advice? Um, gosh, there's a lot I would say. So like, one, maybe, and like to go back to like the first question, I, I kind of felt like I always was looking for more in the engineering jobs I did have. Um, and I like that connection with, with people and re- teaching is very rewarding. And so if you like know that's something that you like, I will say that it has been one of the best things that I've ever done. It is a lot of work. Don't get me wrong. Um, but it is very rewarding. I think it's also a way to pay it forward in a way. I think engineers do that anyway, but it, you know, it's a little bit of hoping that you put so we put a lot of faith in, in the next generation, you know, and I, I have a lot of faith in this generation too. Um, but just like, if that's something that feels right, you know, to you, like something that you've thought about, like it is very rewarding. The other thing is there are, I I think they are, I don't know if they call them credentials or licenses, but uh, CTE, which is career technical education. um, There are jobs available that they are looking for people who are career changers and the it's called CTE. And there's a bunch of different like career paths basically. And engineering is one of them. And they, I think you have to have, I think it's only like two years experience within the last 10 years or something like that, like real world experience that make you eligible to get that, that CTE. Um, Also charter schools like mine, where they have a credentialing program, like built within um, their school. And, and, and then also if you're interested, high tech, high, uh, they are based in San Diego, but we have people from all over come to our school. Um, The, the graduate schools in Point Loma, which is a beautiful area, but um, they come from all over to be a part of our graduate school. Um, and you can get, every, you know, all your credentials all together. So which is like the part about it for like a professional that's going to change. You mean that that graduate it could school be that either you were way. earlier? Okay. Yeah, it could be a CTE okay. you can get without 
I don't think you need to do any. I mean, I never went to school for education, right? I just got my credential um, through the program and took the test. So if you want your credential, you don't necessarily have to go back to school. You just need to get your credential um, and you can either do the career technical option where you would teach to your specialty, which would be engineering. Or for me, which I have my clear uh, credential in math and science, um, and I can teach either of those through high school, you would just have to go to a regular credentialing program. But, um, you know, I think that there's, I'm hoping like with with your last question, I'm hoping we're seeing it more and more, you know, that it's part of every school. Um, Right now, my my older son is uh, taking computer science uh, his freshman year as an elective in high school. Um, so they are available, but they are again, like a student choice. So I'm hoping it's right. more where everybody gets like a, some kind of exposure, um, even at a young age. And as you know, too, there is uh, data on this that, you know, they say that, uh, the younger we are, the more creative we are. And so starting at a really early age, um, because when we be like, you know, why can't I try this? I'm going to do it this way, you know? And then as you get older, you're like, oh, I don't want to do that. My friends are going to make fun of me. But when you're younger, you don't care. And like you, uh, it's kind of a tangent, but there's one thing we do at the beginning of the school year. And it's how many ways you can think of how to use a paperclip. And they call it like divergent thinking. And uh, yeah. people that are five, five-year-olds are in like the genius category. And then the older they get, it declines how creative they yeah. are. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah. I think like one of the biggest things from just like your career path is just like, like what I, again, we've known each other for a while. So like just seeing how you've done your career path, I think the biggest thing is just not be scared to like make a change because jumping Mm -hmm. into teaching, that's a, that's a big switch, you know, like going to the city, going back to consulting, like those are kind of like, they all feel like they're sort of in the same realm, but I felt like, I feel like jumping into a teaching career is like, that's a big jump. So like, you know, giving it a go. (laughs) And I think, I think too, I mean, the, the older kids too, you know, like it might be a little bit less with like classroom management and, you know, being able to do like an elective um, or a CTE class would probably be like, or even um, if you have your master's, you can, you know, be at the uh, community college level too. You know, there's a lot there. Yeah. But yes, what you're saying it is, I mean, a lot of my day is, is working with students who are having anxiety or having a social issue. Um, It's, you know, there's a lot that goes with teaching. It's consuming, but it also, like I said, is, is, it is very rewarding. Awesome. Well, thank you for joining me today, Alicia. It was great to talk to you. Um, obviously love catching up and, um, yeah, thanks for sharing, sharing your career and kind of how it works in, um, in your realm. And it's just been great to have you on the podcast. So thank you. Yeah. Same. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed the episode today. We'd love to hear your feedback, comments, and or questions. To leave them, please visit structuralengineeringchannel.com. There you'll find a summary of the key points discussed in today's episode, as well as any links or resources or websites mentioned during the episode. Don't forget to subscribe to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to your podcast. Until next time, we wish you the best in all of your structural engineering endeavors.